These videos are going to be about the inverse function theorem for multivariable calculus, and we're going to go through the proof in quite a lot of detail uh, with a lot of background and hopefully motivation as to why you would come up with the proof the way it is, um, and maybe even how you could come up with some of the ideas yourself, even though it's a pretty deep theorem. So the situation of the inverse function theorem, um, if you don't know the situation at all, then this, these aren't the videos for you, but um, we've got a function, a uh, differentiable function, and we'll say a little bit more about exactly what we're assuming about f. Um, the function f from some subset of Rn, here it's pictured as R2, so in general it's going to be Rn, to another copy of Rn, here's another plane, R2, and we're, I'll talk a little bit about how you don't want to think of them as the same R2 um, necessarily, so it's going to be f from Rn to Rn, and uh, I've denoted the grid lines for u and v and looked at the image of those grid lines in the x and y space in the output to get a sense of what this map is doing. And what I want to know is can I invert this map? And preferably can I invert it as a nice map, let's say differentiable or if I assume anything else about f, maybe the same kind of nice function as uh, that f is. So in this case, it looks pretty good. The images of these straight lines up and down, they cross in a nice way. They don't, they're not tangent to each other. They don't have cusps or corners or anything. Well, the images of those, cur those lines are these curves. And they, even though they're curved, they intersect in the same kind of way. And so that suggests that perhaps if I give, have a point in here, well, that looks like maybe it's going to map over to here in a nice way. This other intersection is going to map over to here looks like in this situation it might be nice. What do I need to know about f? Is there some simple condition I can check on f to make sure that I can invert this function? Now, the thing to do um, if you're not sure about the intuition about this at all is watch some of my videos on mapping examples or uh, there's some that are called hints to mapping problems or even the matrix of derivatives that's more basic and that would help with the basics of the situation. But I wanted to go ahead and, and put up the picture first. Um, so there's many, many, many books that have proofs of the inverse function theorem. A lot of them are pretty similar. Um, I'm loosely basing what I'm saying out of uh, Ted Schifrin's book, Multivariable Mathematics. So I'll put that up there, Schifrin. It's a good source. But I'm greatly expanding on what he says. Um, I'll also make reference to Spivak and his nice little book, Calculus on Manifolds. And I'll make brief mention of Hubbard and Hubbard's book on vector calculus as well. So I want to start out by asking something more basic than can we invert some function in a nice way? Because the fundamental thing, it turns out, that a very basic question and the key to the trickiest part of the proof is simply solving equations. And this is a perspective that Schifrin does well and Hubbard and Hubbard do well as well. It's just solving equations. I have f of x, I have some complicated function f, and I want to know, can I solve f of x equals y? So here we're given a fixed y. And then, can I solve it? There's standard questions here. Can I solve this? Can I find an x? So that's the existence question. Absolutely basic. If we're going to invert this function, the solution should be unique. That's going to turn out to be relatively easy, the uniqueness part of it, although it's kind of the other half of what I'm going to be telling you about. Um, and more practically, how? to find x, and realistically, how to find an approximate solution. Almost nothing is really exactly soluble in mathematics. It's the disappointing thing you discover once you get past like the quadratic formula. And when we say approximate solution, really, uh, we want approximate solution to within any specified error tolerance. And the usual way to do that is to create a sequence of better and better approximate solutions. Okay, now um, I don't, I'm not going to turn this into 
lectures on applied mathematics, but it's really interesting to um, to look at it a little bit from that applied point of view of pr the practicalities of solving equations, because that actually gives us a lot of a lot of insight into what we can do here. Okay, so here's the situation: we have uh, an open set u in R n. That's going to be the domain of our function for the all these lectures, okay? And it's open because we want to be able to wiggle around and take derivatives and things like that. And it's not all of our n because there's lots of functions that are perfectly well behaved on their domain, but we don't want to assume that they're well behaved everywhere, okay? And so we have a function u to r m. And for, for what I'm starting out with, n can often be different from m because I'm being very general. Eventually, they're going to have to be the same if I'm going to really invert this in a nice way. Okay, um, and we have y in our m. So here's the picture. Again, here's our u. Here's f. Here's our m. Here's our n. And we got some y. And the question is, can I find an x that actually maps to y? That's the existence question, and that's actually what I'm going to focus on. Um, I'm not going to focus on the uniqueness so much, but the existence and the practicalities of finding it are going to be important. Okay, so I want to solve f of x equals y, and so I'm going to sort of pretend to be an applied mathematician for just like a minute. Uh, well, probably in the next video, I'm running out of time on this one because my screencaster is being weird as usual. Um, I'm going to pretend to be an applied mathematician for a minute, but then get a theoretical insight out of the application. Okay, so. Um, yeah, this is going to have to be chopped up into pretty small pieces. Um, but that's what I'm going to start with is practicalities on solving this to give us insight in the proof of the IFT, the inverse function theorem.